Ancient Sediments of the Southern Alps of New Zealand. In the previous video, we, we shortly discuss the formation of the Southern Alps of New Zealand, one of the biggest mountain ranges in Southern Hemisphere. We talked about different types of the rocks you can met there. However, we didn't discuss how they were formed originally, where they come from. Let's in this video talk a little bit in detail of two different types of rocks the Southern Alps composed of and how they were formed originally to become a backbone of Southern Alps of New Zealand. All these rocks, which are mostly sedimentary, you can met around the Southern Alps, started to build up on the sea floor back in the day when the Earth was different than now. We know that about 250 million years ago, the Southern Hemisphere looked differently from the space than it looks now. There was a one united single supercontinent known as Gondwana. Chain of volcanic islands stretched along the east coast of this Gondwana. Ash and sediment eroded from these volcanoes accumulated in the adjacent seas. And this sediment became the arc rock of New Zealand eastern province. Away from this part, another type of sediment was brought from Gondwana. It was slowly eroded on the land and brought by the rivers towards the ocean. And this sediment later became the Torles rocks. Different researchers suggested that those rocks mostly came from Antarctic area of Gondwana, and some now suggested that also from northeastern Australia. Surviving fragments of this ancient Gondwana are scattered now across our Earth, such as Australia, Antarctica, India, Africa, and South America. In New Zealand, as we mentioned in the previous video, Gondwana now form most of Fjordland, the West Coast, and West Nelson. And it's the oldest rock you can find in New Zealand. Some of these rocks are date over 600 million years, Precambrian period. And in geology, we call it Western Province, the oldest rocks of New Zealand crust. However, the most of the Southern Alps to the east from the main divine are formed from younger sediment of New Zealand crust, similar like a North Island. We call it East Province. These rocks go back about 200 million years ago of geological time, from the Carboniferous to the Cretaceous periods, and most of these rocks are sedimentary. Traditionally, geologists divided the eastern province into two groups, and we call them Arc rocks, we talked about, and Turlos rocks. Those volcanic ashes that settled down in the bottom of the ocean, and those materials that have been brought from ancient Gondwana. All these rocks started in the bottom of the ocean around Gondwana. And geologists spent a lot of time to understand when and how exactly they were deposited and how they were brought together. East coastline of Gondwana, about 250 million years ago, contained a chain of volcanic islands and they were spread for more than 1,000 kilometers. And it was talked a lot of ashes erupted and settled down on the bottom of the sea at that time. All these volcanic rocks were washed down and eroded into the sea. And it's all processes were happening during 200 million years. And gradually all the sediment layers were building up on the ocean floor. We know these rocks in New Zealand in Southland, east of Nelson and South Auckland. Near Lake Wakatipo, they form small part. And some of them were changed into schist. See my previous video about schist and metamorphism of the rocks around Southern Alps. Thus, different types of volcanic sediment will continue accumulated all around the island arc of the coast of Gondwana. Why majority of the sediment you find right now around Southern Alps will form a little bit differently. Those materials, Torlos group, mainly light-colored minerals such as quartz and filchbar, must be eroded from the land, consisted mainly of granite, this Gondwana land. And today we call those rocks Storlos rocks. And similar like our rocks, they deposited for almost 200 million years, finishing in the early Cretaceous. However, the question where this Storlos material came from, very hard to pick. Material was broken off from the continent, Gondwana, moved by the rivers and then by the ocean, and then deposited on the bottom of the ocean. And then while it was uplifted up, it was modified. That's for geologists like a detective trying to figure out where in the past those rocks came from. We found that there's not so much 
volcanic material in those rocks, so they must come from the area far away from the volcanic arc. Scientists finding the granitic rocks of the type today in Mary Bird land in Antarctica and traditionally regarded this as a source of the Torlos rock. However, some modern studies of the minerals in Torlos have shown similarity with those in granite rocks of Queensland, Australia. And now some geologists convinced that more probably Torlos group of the rocks coming from Queensland in Australia. And no matter where they were eroded from, of Gondwana land at time, today these rocks composed more than the half of New Zealand landmass. You can find those Torlos rock from south as far as Ataga to the East Cape and also in the ocean around the Katman Islands and Auckland Islands. Another puzzle about this Torlos group rock was struggling geologist how it was formed lay down on the bottom of the sea. We see the very widely spread layers of grey sandstone and thin beds of sandstone alternating repeatedly with thin beds of mudstone. When you're in the field today, you can see those rocks very jigsaw puzzled and alternated. They experience so much uplifting movements and readjustments, scorching, that it's very hard to trace the one layer and the other. There's also not many fossils at all in those sediments, which complicated the job to reconstruct which layer is younger than which. That's why this is so hard to understand the original lay position of Torlos rocks and how they've been formed. Geologists are struggling with this, this type of sediments around the world. And only recent advances in seafloor research, geology, give us some answers how the modern large fence under the ocean build up, formed from sandstones, mudstones, which scientists discover on the seafloor at the foot of the continental slopes. And from that, we can reconstruct what might happen in the past. When you look on this beautiful fence under the ocean, you see the head of this fence, large valleys and steep side canyons, which cutting across the continental slope. We can see that layers of the sand running down through the submarine canyons into the muddy fence surface. We know that one of the largest in the world deep sea fan found in Indian Ocean receiving the material brought by amazing river gang in Brahmaputra. And this fan about 3,000 kilometers across. So scientists reconstruct how these fans are formed. And if you think about the ocean water, the muds build up very slowly with time from settled material in the water, which settled down at the base of the ocean. It's happening very slow, centimeters by centimeter. However, from time to time, big input of sand washed down by the rivers into those fans. Probably some kind of event, uh, seasonal or strong storm monsoons, or something like that bringing a lot of material by the rivers, coarser material, and it's then flushed down into the canyons. Some of this material can cause even underwater landslides. It's speed up and mixed with seawater and formed dense churning mass of sediment. It's moved down the slope in a great speed, disturbing the material from the bottom. And at the end, mouth of the canyon, this mass spreads across the surface, making the submarine fan. Eventually it's all settled down and blanket the muddy bottom with a layer of sand. And then the process repeats. You have another event when a lot of mud slowly accumulated on top of it, like a layer. And then another event of a landsliding sandstone coming from the input from the river from the continent, bring a lot of material and a coarser material. Thus, observing this fence on the bottom of the ocean today, we can understand how it's happened in the past. And there's so many questions been answered to geologists who study the puzzle rocks of New Zealand we found on the surface today. For example, numerous conglomerates, the stones embedded in mud or sand, understood to be formed from the material that being disturbed within these submarine canyons or in channels of submarine fans. And we see the different types of deposition, alterating sandstone, mudstone, 
deposited slowly in a quiet deep waters and the sand deposited rapidly from, from the currents. However, we find some other types of rocks within this tallest group as well and scientists suggested maybe not all of them were formed just specifically in the canyons. Some of those rocks were pre-existing rocks and they were just covered by the sandstone and mudstones. Then the submarine fence spread onto them, burying the previously deposited volcanic rocks, seamounts and calcareous deposits such as limestones and the great thickness of sand and mud. And later it being become uplifted, mixed in, overturned and exposed in New Zealand. Some of the Turles rocks suggested to be formed not under the water in the deep ocean, ancient ocean, but a little bit later accumulated in the river deltas of ancient Gondwana coastline during late Jurassic till middle Cretaceous times. There was similar formation of fans formed only on the land this time. Therefore, we can understand how this diverse turles deposited group of rocks have been formed all around New Zealand. However, we need to understand how it's been brought from the bottom of the ocean together with the arc rocks as well and formed into the mountains we observe today. To answer this question, look for my next video about Southern Alps of New Zealand, part 3. We will talk about the greatest forces of our Earth to move continents, demolish all the continents and build new ones, known as the plate tectonics forces. Please subscribe on my channel so you will not miss new videos.